It's been a day. That means there's another brand new film on Netflix about a serial killer called Woman of the Hour. A feel good movie about a douchebag who goes around murdering and doing unspeakable things to unsuspecting women and getting away with it scot free for many years. I just checked this film out and now I want to give you a spoiler free review, tell you if it's worth your time or if it's one you could probably skip. Let's begin. <laughs> If you find yourself enjoying this video, think about becoming a subscriber. It's free of charge. You can even hit the notification bell and like the video. I would appreciate it. Woman of the Hour is an R-rated hour and a half film directed and starring Anna Kendrick. Kendrick plays an actress named Cheryl. Well, actress is doing a lot of legwork. She's trying to become one. She has the looks. She has the acting chops. She just needs to hit that right role. And I will say, Anna Kendrick, she hasn't aged a day since Pitch Perfect. They could make a Pitch Perfect 4 and she could probably still pull off being in college. Her character Cheryl, not quite as successful as Anna Kendrick in real life, but she might have just got her big break. Her talent agent landed her a role on the dating game where she gets to sit there in front of a live studio audience as three contestants try to win her heart. What she and the audience members unfortunately don't know at the time is that one of these contestants is a straight up serial killer. This is a real thing that happened. Woman of the Hour is based on a true story about the real life serial killer, Rodney Alcala. I actually didn't know who this clown was going in, so I was hoping to learn a little bit. See, what Netflix does, this is their playbook thing, is they get the rights to these stories, they do a documentary on it, and then they do this kind of lifetime movie situation. And that's really what this felt like, a lifetime movie. And my relationship with those are, you know what, they're okay. They're, they're watchable, I don't feel like I got a lot out of them, but they do the job. And that's exactly what this is. A film that does something, <laughs> and then it's done, and you'll probably forget about it in a week. 12 years will go by and your mom will randomly bring up this film saying, oh yeah, that, you know, the girl from Pitch Perfect was in it. It was about that killer. And you'll sit there pondering, scratching the back of your mind and go, oh yeah, I saw that movie. That was, that was all right. Now saying a Netflix exclusive is all right is a damn fine compliment. We are grading on a curve here, folks. Most of the Netflix exclusives, streamers in general, are kind of trash. So having a movie that's at least well-made, well-acted, gives you a little bit to go on about some of these storylines is an absolute win. And Kendrick's character Cheryl is not the only one we're gonna be following. In fact, this movie's gonna jump all over the place within a four or five year window, I believe. And when I say jumping around, holy hell do I mean it. You will go from 1976, then you'll drop back to 74, then up to 75. It's constantly switching, and I don't know if this was the most effective way to tell this tale. The problem is, some of these storylines don't really have much resolution. If you're looking for a movie that's going to get more into the psychology of Rodney, that's not this. He's a secondary character. It's called Woman of the Hour, and that's really what it's showcasing. Some of these different women, the situations they found themselves in with this douchebag, and how they managed to either get out or die trying. If you're looking for a movie that's not too graphic, but is still gonna get a little into the dirt, this is the film for you. It is rated R, and that's because there is sexual violence. Rodney was not a good guy to these women. Not only did he kill them, he did unspeakable things. The film thankfully does not show these moments, it's just implied. There are some violent moments of the movie, but this is not the type of film that's gonna dwell on it. Anna Kendrick knows how to tell the audience what's happening without showing it, and definitely without glorifying it. Daniel Zavato has the unfortunate task of playing Rodney. He's fine, he doesn't have to do a whole lot here, just look kind of disturbed menacing, but also be able to put on a bit of that charm. That kind of captures these women and gets them into his spider web. Oftentimes coming across as a photographer that just wants to get a couple good photos, taking him up to the mountains where you can get a picturesque shot. He goes after people that are susceptible to danger, runaways, innocent teenagers. And again, Kendrick's gonna showcase some of these different women with her being the most prominent one. Which is fine, but also odd, because a good portion of this movie is dedicated to Cheryl's character and trying to become an actress and getting onto this dating game show and how nervous she is going in front of the audience and some of the whole like behind the scenes stuff there, which isn't the most relevant to the overall story. 
As far as the visuals and the score go, both very solid. Netflix oftentimes pisses me off because they use those 8K digital in-house cameras that I think look just miserable. They don't have a cinematic quality to them. This does have that feel. It has that cinematic look. It takes place in the 70s, so you have a bit of a retro flair to it. The music, when noticeable, keeps you on edge a little bit. Again, it's a perfectly well-made movie with good intentions. I'm just not sure it was necessary. It's just kind of hard to explain, but after the film's done, I'm just thinking, okay. All right, we know serial killers suck. We know women are put in really hard situations to get out of. What else you got? What more is there here? And it just felt like it was lacking. It was missing something. Maybe it was the fact that the narrative is often focused on the acting side of it, and it's not really threading that needle very well. Okay, those are my thoughts. Basically a lifetime movie. You could watch it pretty fast. Again, hour and a half. It did feel longer than an hour and a half, uh, probably because we were jumping all over the place constantly. So it was hard to really just focus and get invested in one character because then you're off to somewhere else. I wouldn't say you need to see this movie though, but you're not gonna have a terrible time with it. It's just, there's so much better out there. So I'm not gonna say like, oh yeah, absolutely watch this one for sure. All right, those are my thoughts. Let me know if you did watch it, your thoughts on the whole thing. Again, think of subscribing to the channel, liking the video. And if you've been here for a while and love what I'm doing, maybe think about becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. It's the best way to support the channel, but absolutely appreciate it. Hopefully I see you next time.